The American Mafia, also referred to as the Italian American Mafia, is a highly organized criminal organization operating in the major cities of the US and Canada. The Mafia was born in Sicily in the 1860s, following the unprecedented levels of crime that hit the island after its liberation from foreign control. By the early 1900s, the criminal organizations had evolved to over a hundred semi-autonomous groups operating under one brand, the Mafia. They ran protection rackets that extorted protection money from wealthy Sicilians. They were responsible for most murders, kidnappings, and other heinous crimes across southern Italy. The first published accounts of the existence of Mafia in the United States was in the spring of 1869, when the New Orleans Times reported that the city's second district is overrun by a group of notorious Sicilian criminals who had formed some kind of partnership for the plunder and disturbance of the city. Giuseppe Morello was the first Mafia member known to have fled to the U.S. from Sicily, together with six other mobsters after murdering the Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor of the province of Sicily and eleven other wealthy Sicilians. Though the U.S. has always been a choice destination for Sicilian Mafia fugitives since the 1800s, the presence of the Mafia in the U.S. underworld only became prominent in the 1920s. In October of 1922, Benito Mussolini became Prime Minister of Italy. He established a dictatorial regime that censored political activities and launched heavy waves of crackdowns on the Sicilian Mafia. The political unrest and violence that ensued resulted in a mass migration of Italians, Mafia, and non-Mafia members alike to the United States. Upon arrival in the U.S., they settled in impoverished neighborhoods in New York's Harlem and Brooklyn and other major metropolitan areas like New Orleans and Chicago. To escape poverty, a good number of the Italian immigrants joined criminal groups that ran bootlegging, extortion, and prostitution rackets. The criminal or mafia groups first became prominent in the Italian ghettos of New York. They gradually progressed to citywide, regional, and eventually national organizations. In the 1920s, Mafia operations in the United States were controlled by Giuseppe Massaria, popularly referred to as Joe the Boss. Massaria was born in Sicily. He migrated to the U.S. at the age of 16 and became part of the Morello crime family in Harlem, New York. He gained a reputation for himself by killing multiple rival crime bosses and their hitmen, and for surviving many assassination attempts. By his early 20s, he had assumed leadership of the Morello crime family in New York. When his biggest rival, Salvatore di Aquila, got killed in October of 1928, Massaria was voted the new Capo di Capi, or Boss of Bosses of the American Mafia. Massaria's lieutenants were the most notorious gangsters in New York, like Charles Lucky Luciano, Albert Anastasia, Vito Genovese, Alfred Mineo, Willy Moretti, Joe Adonis, and Frank Castello, all originally from Sicily and other regions of southern Italy. After his elevation, Massaria started demanding monetary tributes from other Mafia clans. When a group of Mafia bosses led by Niccolo Shiro tried to oppose this practice, Massaria asked Shiro to pay a fine of $10,000 and to step down as leader of his Mafia clan, and Shiro complied. Notwithstanding, Massaria's opponents continued to increase within the American Mafia. Most of them were originally from the Sicilian town of Castellamare del Golfo, Shiro included. As a result, Don Vito Ferro, a powerful Sicilian Mafia boss based in Castellamare del Golfo in Sicily, decided to seize control of American Mafia operations and end Massaria's tyranny against fellow Castellamarese. Ferro dispatched his lieutenant Salvatore Maranzano to New York to rally other Castellamarese mobsters in the U.S. for a clash for leadership against Massaria. The Castellamarese faction in the U.S. included Joseph Bonanno, also known as Joe Banana, Stefano Macadino, Joseph Profacci, and Joe Aiello. During that time, alcohol production and distribution were prohibited in the United States. This made the illegal supply of alcohol a very lucrative business for the Mafia. As tension grew between the Massaria and the Maranzano factions, each side frequently hijacked the other's alcohol trucks, resulting in minor confrontations and shootouts between their hitmen. Gaetano Reina, a former hitman of the Morello crime family and ally of Massarias, switched sides and joined the Castellamarese, who were growing in numbers and notoriety by the day. On the evening of February 26, 1930, Reina was ambushed on the streets of the Bronx and shot dead allegedly by Massarias hitman Vito Genovese. Again on July 15, 1930, Vito Bonventre, another Castellamarese-born member of the Maranzano faction, was gunned down outside his garage on Massarias' orders. 
Consequently, on August 15, 1930, Castello Marie's loyalists killed Giuseppe Morello, an old hand in the killing game, who acted as Masaria's war strategist and chief advisor. Two weeks after that, Masaria suffered another blow with the murder of a great ally, Joseph Pinzolo, who was shot dead in Times Square by Castello Marie's loyalists. Masaria immediately retaliated with the murder of a Castello Marie's ringleader, Joe Aiello, in Chicago on October 23, 1930 shot from a two-story building from across the street while trying to board a taxi. Aiello's death severely angered the Castellamarese, who struck back 13 days later by killing two of Masaria's key gang members, Manfredi Mineo and Steve Ferrigno. Earlier that week, the Castellamarese hitmen had rented an apartment on the first floor of an apartment building on Pelham Parkway in the Bronx, in which the two men lived. They positioned themselves in the window with submachine guns and kept a close watch on the courtyard. On September 5, 1931, they finally took sight of the men and immediately opened fire. Shortly after that, on February 3, 1931, at around 11.45 a.m., another key lieutenant of Masaria, Joseph Catania, was shot six times in the head by a Castella Marie's hit squad in the Bronx. These murders were a big blow to the Masaria faction and turned the tides of the war. In the weeks that followed, other Masaria gang members were either shot dead or narrowly escaped with their lives. Given the worsening situation, many of Masaria's allies began defecting to the Castellamarie's side. To make matters worse, there was an ongoing generational conflict in the Masaria camp between the old Sicilian-born leadership and the younger and more diverse American-born Italians known as the Young Turks. The Young Turks, led by Masaria's closest ally Charles Lucky Luciano, were more forward-thinking and hated the unnecessary orthodox norms in the Mafia, such as the unwillingness to work with non-Italians. Also, they viewed the conflict with Castella Maurice as unnecessary and bad for business and were determined to bring it to an end. Luciano's vision to modernize the Mafia and do away with all the rigid old ways attracted so many followers and exposed the inadequacies of Masaria's traditionalist leadership in making the Mafia prosper in modern times. Driven by ambition and with the Castellamarie's victory becoming imminent, the young Luciano, together with another Masaria ally Vito Genovese, secretly reached out to the Castellamarie's leader Salvatore Maranzano for a deal, based on which Luciano agreed to arrange for Masaria's murder, after which Maranzano would call for an immediate ceasefire. It was also agreed that Luciano would take over all Masaria's rackets and become Maranzano's second-in-command in the new Mafia government that would be created. On April 15, 1931, Luciano lured Masaria into a meeting at the Nuova Via restaurant on Coney Island. While playing cards, Luciano excused himself to the bathroom shortly before gunmen invaded the restaurant and sprayed Masaria with machine gun bullets. Masaria's death finalized the Castellamarie's victory and marked the end of the American Mafia War, which became known as the Castellamarie's War. The Castellamarie's leader, Salvatore Maranzano, became the new head of the American Mafia, and Lucky Luciano became his second-in-command as per their agreement. After the war, Maranzano restructured the American Mafia by dividing the Italian gangs in New York into five families to be run by five of his closest allies. They were 1. Joe Bonanno boss of the Bonanno family, which still exists till present day under the same name. 2. Charles Lucky Luciano, boss of the Luciano family, which is the present day Genovese crime family. 3. Joseph Profaci, boss of the Profaci family, now the Colombo crime family. 4. Thomas Gagliano, boss of the Gagliano family, now the Lucese crime family. And finally, 5. Vincent Mangano, boss of the Mangano family, now the Gambino crime family. The major urban areas in the Northeast and Midwest of the United States were organized into one family per city. New York alone was attributed five families due to the high volume of organized crime in the city. Also, Maranzano came up with a concise system of hierarchy within each family, with the Mafia boss being the head, assisted by an underboss, under whom are advisors, followed by captains, who control groups of soldiers. Then at the very bottom are associates, who work for the Mafia but are not an integral part of the mob. While associates could come from any background and affiliations, the higher ranks could only be attained by full-blooded Italian-Americans who had gone through the initiation process. 
After restructuring the American mafia, Salvatore Maranzano summoned the crime bosses from throughout the country to a meeting at the Wappingers Falls in New York, where he declared himself the Capo de Capi or Boss of Bosses. However, Maranzano's reign as head of the American mafia was short-lived. Though he was a little more forward-thinking as compared to Masaria, he was still found to be too conservative for the liking of Luciano and the Young Turks. For example, though his policies allowed for non-Italians to be involved in the mafia, they could only be associates and not attain the upper echelons of the mob, thereby sidelining some of Luciano's closest friends like the Russian-born Meyer Lansky and Benjamin Siegel, who was born to Jewish immigrant parents from Austria-Hungary. Also, Luciano and the Young Turks found Maranzano to be even greedier and more power-hungry than Masaria. This was clearly demonstrated by his act of restructuring the mafia into families, appointing bosses, and declaring himself Il Capo de Capi. In essence, Maranzano was systematically transforming the American mafia into some kind of oligarchy. He was fond of calling his organization the Roman Empire and referring to himself as Julius Caesar. Maranzano's arrogance and harsh treatment of his lieutenants didn't sit well with Luciano and other prominent young Turks like Vito Genovese and Frank Costello, who all had great ambitions of their own. As time went by, Luciano's ambition and discontent with Maranzano's leadership became apparent. As a result, in September of 1931, Maranzano hired an Irish-American mobster Vincent Cole, popularly known as the Mad Dog, to kill Luciano. As part of the plot, Maranzano invited Luciano to a meeting in his office at 230 Park Avenue in Manhattan, where he would be murdered by the Mad Dog. But before the plan could be carried out, one of Maranzano's young lieutenants, Tommy Lucese, alerted Luciano that he was marked for death. The meeting was to be held on September 10, 1931. Instead of going to the meeting, Luciano sent a hit squad of four Jewish mobsters who invaded the meeting venue with the help of Lansky and Siegel. Disguised as federal agents, two of the mobsters disarmed Maranzano's personal bodyguards, while Tommy Lucese pointed out Maranzano to the other two. The men subdued and stabbed Maranzano several times before shooting him to death. With Masaria and Maranzano out of the picture, the Young Turks led by Charles Lucky Luciano were finally in control of the American Mafia. Despite his widespread support and charisma, Luciano never assumed the position of head of the American Mafia, even though he would have faced very little or no opposition in doing so. Basically, Luciano envisaged a modern Mafia with a transparent system of governance, whereby a committee of trusted men who represent the different Mafia families would sit, deliberate issues, and settle disputes between Mafia members, instead of looking up to one supreme leader. While retaining the basic family structure that Maranzano had put in place, Luciano abolished the position of Capo de Capi, or Boss of Bosses. He created the American Mafia Commission, which comprised leading members of the five New York crime families, to collectively govern Mafia activities in New York. Also, Luciano knew that taking the title of Capo de Capi would make him a target for an ambitious challenger from another family, or even from within his own clan. The idea of a commission was inspired by the concept of parliamentary democracy, knowing that the inclusion of all factions of the Mafia in decision-making would increase cooperation and reduce the unnecessary internal conflicts that impeded the growth and prosperity of the Mafia under the old regime. Luciano also discarded all orthodox ideologies that were not beneficial to the Mafia as a group. He believed in diversity and flexibility, and therefore made it possible for other societal groups like the Jews and the Irish to be admitted, and to excel in the Italian-American Mafia, such as Russian-born Meyer Lansky and Benjamin Siegel, who was born to Jewish immigrant parents, both of whom became Luciano's closest friends and allies. With the establishment of the Commission, the American Mafia enjoyed a period of peace and prosperity. Though originally composed of representatives of the five families in New York, the crime families from other major cities like Buffalo, Chicago, Philadelphia, and Detroit later joined the commission. In fact, even Irish, Jewish, and other non-Italian criminal organizations in the U.S. had representatives in the commission. In essence, Luciano had succeeded in bringing all the different mafia gangs in America under one umbrella. Though the American Mafia initially emerged as an offshoot of the Sicilian Mafia, it was Luciano's idea that inspired the creation of a Mafia commission back in Sicily. The success of Luciano's commission, his other innovations in the Mafia world, his power maneuvers, and his extraordinary accomplishments as a gangster, which we shall all examine in another video, have earned him the title of the criminal mastermind of the 20th century. In 1998, Times Magazine listed Luciano among the top 20 most influential builders and titans of the 20th century. To conclude, 
we would say that the two factions of the old Sicilian-born leadership, that is, the Masseria Gang and the Castellamarese under Maranzano, who clashed for control over the American Mafia operations, both ended up as losers in the American Mafia War. The only real winners were the younger, more diverse, and forward-thinking mobsters headed by Lucky Luciano. Thank you for watching. If you have a video idea, why not leave a comment below? And if we make it, we'll give you a big shout out. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more videos on crime stories, notorious outlaws, and historical scandals.